all to study with Marsha YouTube channel. When drawing a flow chart, sometimes the flow of the chart flows smoothly according to a proper order. So, if you draw the flow chart according to a well-defined order, we call them as a sequence structure flow chart. As an example, the way you follow the direction when you are going to your friend's house. If the same procedure is repeating until a defined condition is met, we call those kinds of flowcharts as a repetition structure flowchart. As an example, you eat until your tummy and your hunger is satisfied. At last, we have the selection structure. If you need to select one option for a given problem, we should use the selection structure. So, as an example, we can choose bread or pasta for our dinner. So, let's draw some flowcharts and clarify all these three structures. Here, I have mentioned three problems below. Let's identify the control structures for each of them. Following the recipe when you are preparing an orange juice. Second one, when it is rainy, we won't play outside, we will read books. The third one, completing all my homework tonight. Okay, so let's consider one by one. In the first one, they are following a recipe when preparing the orange juice. So here see, you should follow a proper order when you are doing this task, right? So, now we know, if we are following an order, it falls under sequence structure. Okay, so let's see how to draw the flowchart now. So, I'm going to start with my starting symbol. And for my ingredients, I will use this symbol. Now, I'm going to add the process. And here is my output and I will end my flowchart now. Here see, now you can see this properly. You cannot jumble the order here because after doing the process, that means after mixing and after cutting the fruits, we can't collect the ingredients. So here we should follow a strict order. Okay, first you should find the ingredients. Then only you should cut it and mix it and add sugar. Okay, now let's go to the second one. Here, you need to do a selection. Here see, if it is raining, we will not play because the garden is wet, right? So, there you have another choice. That means you can read the books if it is raining today. Let's draw the flowchart like this. I will start it with this oval symbol. Then I will take this process box because I need to check whether it's raining today. That means I am checking my weather. Then I will give this decision box. Now in our previous video, we learned how to use variables as well as the decision box. Okay, so I will write here as is it raining. So if it is yes, I'm going to read the books. If it is no, I'm going to play outside. Finally, I will stop both of these symbols. So here, I took a process box for checking the weather because we are performing an action to check the weather. Okay, so that's why I took the process box. So as the third one, I should complete all my homework until I finish all the books. Okay. So here I am going to start with the oval symbol. Next I will check for my homework. So that's the main process I should do. I should check whether I have homework. So I will check it with the process box like this. Then if I have homework I am going to write the answers. So I will take output box for that. Next, I will check, do I have more homework? 
If I don't have any more homework, I can stop the procedure. But sometimes there can be more than one homework per day. So there, you should repeat it. So I'm going to add an arrow on the top of my homework process like this. Okay, and don't forget to name the arrows as yes and no. Finally, I will stop it. So my dear kids, with my next video, let's learn to draw more advanced flowcharts for the above mentioned three control structures. Okay, so those who are doing all levels in local syllabus, this lesson will be very important for you all. So you all can practice with the example which I have given in my Facebook group also. So my dear friends, I hope this part is very clear for you. So see you with another new video soon. Thank you very much.